Okay, Jeremy, here we are again. Uh, time for another release. Um, July 2019, off the coast of Southern California, we've learned that there were nine U.S. Navy warships that were surrounded by, swarmed by, put under surveillance by these unknown objects, as many as 100 in, in total. USS Omaha, in particular, was uh, was put under uh, observation by these things, whatever they are, wherever they're from. Uh, and, and there were as many as 14 that surrounded it at one point. Let's review what you've already released and sort of walk it up to what's new. Sure. So when uh, regarding this event, the first thing that you and I put out together to the world is the green footage. So it's the night vision footage where you see from the deck of the USS Russell what appear to be uh, triangular in shape from the angle of observation, as it said in the classified and non-classified part of, of that intelligence report, but they were pyramid in shape. So these are true UFOs and they were swarming the USS Russell. So that's the first piece of footage that the public saw regarding these 2019 events of July. And that was July 15th. There were two big swarms during that month, but that was from the 15th. Then we, we released together uh, an image and then a set of uh, briefing slides that kind of show another aspect, which is the USS Omaha, and it looked like uh, black and white imagery, and it was, it, you know, it, it, there were still images, but it was in this briefing slide that, again, is contained within a classified document, but is unclassified. So we put that out, and then luck has it, we got the video. So we show the actual video of that uh, UFO trans transcending and becoming a USO, and appearing to, to go into the water without destruction. Now, you and I both know, and we have reported that there was a submarine that was uh, sent out to search for wreckage or the vehicle, nothing was found. So the idea is that when it was going on or off radar, which is happening a lot, you know, it, they may have been going above the scan volume of the radar system or below, which is into the water. And so indeed it is believed that this was a transmedium vehicle. So this the sphere, the sphere that you're talking about, that video is shot. Somebody is shooting it on a screen inside the CIC of the USS Omaha. It's a thermal image of this object that followed along with the ship for about an hour, right? Uh, longer than that, because ch check this out. Uh, so yes, it is uh, the black and white is FLIR, forward looking infrared. It's a thermal signature. It's used in a, in a sapphire system on that particular ship, which is the USS Omaha. So as the Viper team, the visual intelligence team is collecting only, only things of interest, right? That's really important. They only focus their cameras on objects of, of high interest. So they're, they're filming on this screen inside the combat information center, which is, it's, it's like a skiff. It's highly restrictive access but the Viper team is allowed to be there. In fact, they were called in because of how unusual this event is. And the people, you know, as they call fighting the ship or the people dealing with this aspect of these unknowns calls them in to document it. So that's why you see it on a screen. It wasn't me filming a screen. That was, you know, the Viper team filming it. And yes, so, so that was the kind of the second big drop because for the first time it shows us this now a very interesting world. You can hear people surprise as they're talking about it. They say, splash, splash. They don't mean the object splashed the water. Look, this is 11 p.m. at night. This is several miles away. And they should be seeing, uh, uh, you know, heat plumes, exhaust, tails, rotors, all this stuff. And, and they're not. This is a spherical object. So they're, so they're surprised. When they say splash, it means it descended, they believe, into the water. Now, if that's the case, or if it had some other type of cloaking device, how would I know? But look, it's footage in, in a way, like the world had never seen anything like this exactly. So it was so neat to put that out, but we weren't done. Next thing, everybody's always belly aching about radar data. I, I was struggling myself. How do you show radar data? It's inherently classified when it's you know on these warships. However, the navigation radar system, that was actually really good at picking up these unidentifieds swarming the navy warships uh there you go that was the next drop that we put out 
which was the um, actual radar screen filmed in the CIC, the Combat Information Center, by the Viper team. And, and this is why the Pentagon has confirmed all of the footage, because I'm not so sure they had it before you and I started poking around. So look, it's great. So the uh, the radar images had shown that at one point they had as many as 14 of these unknown spheres surrounding that particular ship. Uh, I think at the video clips that you released had as many as eight or nine of them, and they'd pop on and off as if they either went up above or below or some kind of cloaking technology that we don't know about. And that was shot by the same Viper team in the CIC. They shot the screen. They shot the radar screen. Now there's more. There is more. Yes. And, uh, you know, I kind of think that holding this back as kind of one of the last pieces is important because it's the way that it relates and corroborates. You know, everybody wants corroborative sensor data. They want corroborative information. Well, I know as well the Pentagon now has this footage. It should be an easy thing for them to corroborate, being honest to the American public, that this is indeed filmed by Navy personnel from the deck of the USS Omaha, and that it is involved in the case that is still being investigated because the objects that swarmed our Navy ships are still to this day unidentified. And we'll talk more about that. So I'm thinking, well, let's put this out. It's like an inky blackness, but there's lights. And you can see, as we have said, but now this is proof that these were bright lights. I mean, these objects, it, it almost appears they have multiple lights on them. There were a few different colors within the lights. There was white was described, but also like a blue and a red. Um, you know, red, white, and blue, baby. I wish. I wish these were ours. So, which, by the way, that's been completely ruled out by our own military investigations through the Office of Naval Intelligence, the Pentagon, the Department of Defense. These are not ours. We don't know where they launched from. We don't know where they went to. None of them were captured. We don't know whose they were. And it's not that they had like super extreme performance. It was that they were brazen. And we're not just talking about one, two, three, four, five, 14. We're talking about 50 to upwards of 100 of these simultaneously swarming nine different warships to the best of my knowledge with a similar fashion, although different shapes with some of them, as we know from the USS Russell, but they were overhead and some of them, most of the ships experienced one hovering directly above, still stationary, with the others doing movements around the ships. So this is the new footage. Is the, the, and what's important about it is that, yeah, you see lights in the sky, sure, okay? But it's the origin of this, the provenance of it, the information that goes with it. So now you've got, what, how many forms of data now to this whole, you've got night vision, you've got thermal, you've got radar, you have classified and unclassified briefings. You have now uh, additionally video footage, just like anybody could take off of a deck of a ship. But this was filmed by the U.S. Viper team that was on the USS Omaha. So same, same team yes. shoots the, the thermal image off the screen. Same team shoots the radar image, then goes up to the deck to get some video recording of what's in the sky. It's logical, right? You want to get as much data, as much sensor data, as much visual data, as much information as you can to pass up the chain of command. However, that process, as we know, is broken so far, is broken. And that's why I hope to, to become useless to this process. People should not be reaching out to me. Classified or unclassified doesn't matter. Shouldn't be reaching out to me or feeling that they have to. They, they all want to work within their own system of the United States military. But if, if you can't you know, pass things up in a way to show the significance, that's where the frustration comes in. So yes, to answer your question, that's what the Viper team's role is, is things of interest, things of action that could take action. Um, that's what they're called in for. And, and, and all of this, all of this is from Viper teams. Thank you. 
I did find one you know, piece interesting. It, it appears that there is a, a blinking, uh, what appears to be like a plane going overhead. I, I don't know if that was a plane. I'm making the assumption it was a plane. But you know, remember, when you go back into history with UFOs, I mean, we're talking as far back as they've ever been recorded, there have always been blinking UFOs. So I'm not going to count that out. I'm going to say, I don't know. But it appears to me that the, the Viper team individual, they're focusing on the UFOs and then a plane happens to pass above, which was kind of interesting because it's different looking, it's blinking, it's going. So that was neat. He didn't focus in on it as far as I could tell. And I was told that um, if it was an object of extreme interest, the individual would have focused in on it. So as far as the video goes, you're really seeing these, you know, these uh, unidentified flying objects that are part of a much bigger narrative. The video by itself may or may not be impressive. I'm impressed by it. But when you combine it with the thermal imaging to show you the shape that this of the sphere and then the radar data to show that there were several of them around the ship at the same time, combined with a video shot from the deck, that's a pretty complete picture. Yeah, I mean, I, I think about it like this, you know, in, in in Joshua Tree National Park, the film of Joshua Tree is no big deal. But, you know, if you're in the middle of the Sahara Desert and you see a Joshua Tree, that is a big deal. So the video itself, you know, it's inky blackness, it's, you know, lights on the horizon, but you have to understand the context of it and that our military better confirm it or there's other ways that we will uh, have it confirmed because that is indeed where it came from, its origin. And the origin is what makes it so important. Because look, I can tell you all day through the thermal imagery and, and, and the briefing slides, I can tell you that these were self-luminous, these were lit up. But until you have this type of footage, you, you would not know that to be true. So for me, there's a number of things in this video which are highly powerful within the context. And we are leaving it up to the public, the UFO public, to go ahead and call the Pentagon and get it confirmed. Do some work, you know. I, 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 I would, I might have confirmed things my own way already to the point where you and I feel comfortable, George, that we've confirmed things in our own ways. But look, isn't it better if everybody digs in, raises hell, makes some noise, and does their own confirmations of what we're telling them? Jeremy, you've seen some of the chatter. Uh, it's even happening as we're recording this, that why is the UAP task force leaking videos to Jeremy Corbell or George Knapp? Why are they doing that? We should say for the record, the UAP task force has not leaked anything to us, as far as we know, to anyone else. N no, they haven't. They haven't. And, 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 you know, look, people can say anything with their mouths as many times as they want. It doesn't make it true. You know, I know the truth. And here you go, saying it one more time. You and I have multiple, sometimes decades long sources, how we obtain and release all of our footage together, zero of it, zero has come from the UAPTF or anybody within those circles. That's it, full stop. That's not what's happening. Don't be misleading whoever's chattering about it. I don't read social media anymore. <laughs> the, uh, the final thing I thought we'd touch on, the UAP task force DNI released report on Friday did not release any specifics. You and I were kind of hoping that they might touch on some of the cases, the incidents that we have documented. Nothing, only the general statements. Um, why do you suppose that is? And um, I wonder if we'll ever get uh, confirmation about these particular incidents one by one. You know, it's interesting. It was said to me um, when I was exposed to some of these kind of more unique briefings. The point of those briefings were, were, wasn't to prove UFOs to the armed services and the intelligence committee. It was to teach them it's okay to report and we want you to report. And these are the types of things that you should be looking for. It wasn't to prove to people and blow their brains that UFOs are real and they're coming, you know, whatever, whatever's true about UFOs. So similarly with this report, we know that there was in the classified part, at least 14, you know, videos. Interestingly enough, the, the previous UAPTF uh, classified report had 10, about 10 <laughs> videos. <laughs> 
So, so I know that what we have been able to supply to the people that should have had it before us, that those videos and that content was included. In, in this new UAPT or in, in this new report, right? So I, you know, I think George, why we're not seeing a lot of it is because they're they're really smart because they're keeping their doors open. They're not shocking everybody uh, as far as the non-classified thing. Now, of course, we all want it, and I think they should have given it. I think they should have done it, gone through the cases. But really, they need a permanent task force. They need better data, better reporting. They need better analysis. They're admitting that there has been a failure in intelligence, but it is an acknowledged failure in intelligence. And I just want to say for the record, this is the first time in American history that the United States military is fully acknowledging the presence of UFOs, that they do require scientific study, that we should have a program, hopefully on the scale and scope of the Manhattan Project, that we should be taking this seriously and that there's a lot to learn from it. This is not been the way that it's been viewed throughout history, as you know, George. So I'm very encouraged. People are mad about that, but I am yeah. damn encouraged. So there is leaking involved, but it's leaking from us to them, not them to us. Um, you said anyway. it, not me. You said it, not me. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, George. Thanks,